is Eric Sloof. I'm at the VMworld 2014 and I'm joined by an old buddy. How are you, man? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for being here, Eric. The legendary David Bieneman. You used to be the guy from VisionCore, now you are running Liquidware Labs. It's a pretty amazing company. You have, guys have so many products. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a good show for you? It's a great show for us. We have a lot of great one-on-one -on -one meetings and I always love coming out to Europe, so yes. Okay, Europe is great, isn't it? Yes, it's it is. cozy, everyone knows each other. Yeah, I love going on the street and drinking a coffee and watching people, so it's a good time, yeah. Right. So, you, you're going to give us a little demo of the new Stratosphere screens. Uh, can you show us some highlights? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Stratosphere has a really big upgrade uh, this release, 5.7. We've added a whole new Sparkline interface, so it makes it a lot easier, more approachable for you to bubble up information at the top. I'll give you a quick idea of the way this one works. I won't dive into it too deep here, because uh, I can go on for a while. We've got about 36 dashboards in here that have been custom crafted so that you don't have to go ahead and build your own dashboard, but we've aligned them in user experience and consumption and network information and basically broken them out so that you can quickly and easily bubble up information at the top without having to engineer and develop your own dashboard. And so right here on the screen, I'll just show you basically how this works. Each of these little widgets is an independent badge in a way, right, a tile. And these tiles show things like the overall UX score, which is a metric that is the user experience combined of a bunch of different metrics together, the overall rating. But then it breaks down those ratings individually, the login delay, the application load time, the not responding applications, CPU consumption, so on and so forth. It'll do that for your applications, your machines, by user, by groups of people. It'll do it by network IP addresses, uh, VMware hosts or different kinds of hosts. And so it's really quite flexible how you look up and bubble the information up. But then these badges light different colors based on rules that are violated. And you can quickly identify who is violating what. By looking at the badge, you can see that there's 12 applications here that are not responding. And the average applications not responding is shown in gray. So on each of these tiles, there's a gray bar. The gray bar is the average. Who's ever above the average is maybe who you want to focus on. Who's ever below the average is maybe who you don't need to focus on. And that's how these little spark lines work. And you can actually hover the spark lines, and there's detailed information that pops up in a bubble with ancillary metrics that might be related to what you're looking at. So you can kind of understand right from this view, without digging any further, what's causing a contention or an issue. So for instance, if you if you look at a practical example and an administrator has uh, has staged a, the installation of a service pack and that service pack is responsible for crashing applications, you you telling me that this is the way to detect those problems uh, real easy. It, it may be, because in that case, what we would do is see an application that's not responding. We would identify it, click on it, and it would focus all these tiles in that one app. We could see its metrics overall, expand the time range, and see if that spike of not responding continues to happen over a longer period of time. These hold a week's worth of information, so you can see a week and see the spikes in a full week by hour, that is. Not seven days, but 168 positions. And so the top does that. The bottom is the top 10 visually. So you don't have to hover and see the name of the user. You see them right in front of your face without having to hover. So that they work like that, 168 or top 10. Um, and then if you actually had that uh, application not responding or locking up, you would uh, click into one of these little mini graphs here, and it would expand the table out, and then you would ask it, show me the version. It would, so it would say the app name, Google Chrome, Google Chrome, Google Chrome, right? Or whatever the app names are. You'd add the version and then you'd see the versions and one might be a different version. And that's how you would see that user's different from the whole population. Maybe he got the service back. You could do that with the OS too. Give me the OS version and the dot releases and it'll give you that information. So, Or they, they did an upgrade on their own by clicking something in the browser or something. That's right, yeah. we're on revision 30 now and we only approved this to revision 29. It doesn't work with that plugin. So that's exactly how that works and that's how this system works. So from this dashboard level, you bubble it up to the top, what's above the gray line, hover and see who it is, click it. When you click that user or that app, it focuses every tile just on that user and it automatically trends it with reverse time. So you can see if it's looking at today, right now you get the average for today, but when you click that user, it gives you every record up into built hour by hour for today. Same thing if you're looking at 30 days. You got the average for 30 days for all these users. Once you click a user, it gives you the hour by hour average for 30 days so you can see the spikes for that user. And that's how this new system works here. The old systems are still there. Uh, they've been enhanced. They look a little better. You can click them. The speed's gotten better. A bunch of enhancements. But I wanted to show you the visualization and how easy it is to bubble up information at the top now. Great, great. It looks awesome. If people want to have a demo or they want to have some more information, where can they go to? 
Well, they can go to demo.liquidwarelabs.com to actually get access into this system. As a matter of fact, I think the best thing to do is to go to the main website, liquidwarelabs.com, and look for test drive. When you hit the test drive button, it'll actually email you credentials that you can use recurringly to get back in here and, and test the system out for yourself. And this is actually live data. So you're actually not, you're actually looking at something that can make some sense to you. And you can, you know, it's not just test data, so. Okay, that's great, that's great. David, many thanks. I'm gonna hop over to your colleague, Jason Smith. Jason, how are you? Hi, good, thanks for having us here. So, you have something completely different. What's the product you're showing here? Well, David's been showing you about our visibility for VDI. I'd like to show you our portability for VDI and update you on some of the uh, enhancements that we've had there recently. But to recap, what we provide with Profile Unity is full user environment management. So we encapsulate the persona for an end user and we're able to play it back right at user logon. Or if a brand new, a trigger point is reached during, this, during a time interval or if there's an action that's happened in that event. To update the profile, either save that or to kick off a series of events to cause an in-session action to occur. Maybe it's to map a printer because the user's moved or about the network, and we realize that, so we adapt to the end user. So by, by, by getting a new IP address, you can trigger an event, and that event can kick some, something off and would adjust the mapping to a printer or the mapping to a home drive or uh, make it possible to print at home. Exactly. So we, we really customize in-session events during the, during the session for the user. And by doing that, we're, we're really highly adaptable for highly mobile workforces, especially like healthcare or education, low-hanging fruit for the VDI market. Now there's something that we're calling roaming with admin rights that we've added lately. So it is uh, our admin rights restrictions and also allowances in the, in the product. So it uh, it's really gives extra additional functionality within Profile Unity to either restrict what the user can do or to raise the privileges for standard users. You no longer have to make them full admin users just to install an application if you're using persistent desktops or if you're using non-persistent desktops, you can use our FlexApp technology and we can tightly restrict that too. All this is applicable also in physical Windows desktops, so it gives you very powerful functionality. Also, another end user benefit there for an organization is that they can get truly get down to one single base image. So if you can't use app volumes for something or our flex app technology or a thin app, you can put it in the base image and make it disappear from the users you don't want to see it or use that. Okay, great. Can, can you show us a short demo? Yeah, so I'll show you a bit about the interface. So this is uh, what I was talking about here earlier about the application rights management. It's really user rights management. You're able to restrict or enable the privileges of a standard user so you can elevate a user to be able to install an application or run a certain application. And we do this on a very secure format, even down to a SHA-1 hash, so you can't have a user easily rename an executable and get around the security measures. So we've really thought this through before we rolled it out. Application restrictions is a perfect way if you need something in, that can't be virtualized, otherwise virtualized, put it in the base image and then restrict it and make it disappear from all users. And you can't get around that through security permissions either. Next, what I'm talking about is the main features that we introduced with version 6.0. We've introduced trigger points in the session. We touched on that earlier, but that allows you to easily remap and accomplish in session dynamic capabilities to assign policies. All these can be based on our, our very in-depth filter management that goes well beyond Active Directory. So not just user or group, but all the way down to, as you cited, an IP address. Or if the machine is named TH for third floor, you can define when a printer needs to be mapped for someone, or if an application needs to appear on that desktop magically if something's happened in that dynamic session. We've got a brand new version coming out, so I want to give you a bit of an exclusive here. Yes. So we're going to name it, we were going to name it 6.2. I believe the internal consensus is that there's so many updates in it, we're going to name it 6.5. So in that version of Profile Unity, we're, we're going to be the first to introduce Profile as a layer, or a profile disk, that'll be on VMDK, our own flex disk technology will be introduced into this. We'll also later likely be compatible with cloud volumes, app volumes with the same technology. We're going to have the best of both worlds highest pro profile playback that you've ever seen because it'll look very native on VMDK, VMFS storage. It's going to be snapped right in at boot time. And then if you need any portabilities that are outside the profile to run, those will run in a couple of seconds at user logon. It'll be higher performance than streaming. It'll be higher performance than compression. It'll give you the best of both worlds. It'll be the most dynamic profile. Yeah, because the program, the, the, the program is already there in the VMDK and it's attached to the VM exactly. and it's available instantly. The same reason why app volumes look so attractive to VMware, this technology is going to look so attractive to end users because you no longer worry about login times. They're going to be as fast as anyone else in the industry, faster. Fast and flexible. That's Jason, right. many thanks for the interview. Thank you, Eric.